Kiyosh and I'm back for another video. Today we are continuing our talk about money. So if you like these types of videos, please make sure you give them a thumbs up. Make sure you guys subscribe. Make sure you turn on notification bell so you don't miss any more videos from me. And without further ado, let's just get into today's video. Okay, you guys, so today I thought I would talk about personal finance and the six steps I took to get my personal finances in order. To me, having your personal finances in order is sort of like being on your A game when it comes to personal finances. A lot of people don't like talking about personal finance because they're like, I'm broke, I'm destitute, I don't have any money, I don't know where my money's going, I make all this money and I don't know what is happening. And for some people that is true, you make all the money you can make, but ends never meet because you just don't make enough money to live but for most people it's not necessarily that for most people it's just that you're spending and your finances are basically just out of control you're doing all kind of things and you're spending money here and there and you're not really keeping track of your money or where it's going so you think that you're just not making enough money to live but that is not always the case it could be because your personal finances are just spending out of control and you just need to get a handle on on it. All right, so that leads me into my first thing I want to talk about, which is a mindset, which I talked about a little bit in my first video on my video on my personal story of how I got my finances together. And mindset is a really, really big thing. Like I told you guys, there's a lot of negativity and anxiety around money. It's just not something that people uh, think positively about because of the way society is you know if you don't have a lot of money you're not nobody you ain't nobody you ain't got no money you ain't got no coins you can't drive a Benz you ain't got a nice house you ain't got a big car those kind of things in it it comes off as being negative and not positive just because somebody doesn't have a lot of money doesn't mean that they're not living well they just choose not to show and have flashy things because a lot of people who have nice things don't have a lot of money if you think about it think about all the basketball players and the rappers and all the famous people who all of a sudden went broke like mc hammer i know i'm old i'm telling my age you know mc hammer had a big record deal he had a nice house nice money and then you see him on a commercial being broke because they did not know how to manage their personal finances they just saw have a lot of money and they thought it was infinite and it would always be there but money doesn't always be there you can make money every day but you can't make the same amount of money every Every day I can say that so you know you got to get your mindset around um, the negativity and anxiety when it comes to money and a lot of people feel that way because they didn't have good examples when they were growing up of people who just understood personal finances or money in general in order to teach them the positivity about money and I was the same way I didn't have good role models in my life when it came to money so I had to seek out role models outside of my family and my household in order to learn how to get my personal finances together and of course i started with youtube youtube is a great free resource of infinite possibilities of how you can manage your money there's no right way to manage your money there's no um just set rule you have to do it this way you have to go on the internet do some research and figure out what will work for you and your household. For me, I chose to take the Dave Ramsey zero based budget cash envelope system to help me get my finances in order. I don't necessarily follow it to the T today, but it was definitely the foundation of me getting my finances together. And so for there to be all these free resources out there and all of this free information you just have to take the time and be dedicated in order to go find that information and use it to your um circumstances and use it to your benefit in order to get your personal finances together and also watching those video will change your mindset about money it will make money and budgeting a more positive thing and a more instead of feeling like somebody's nitpicking your life and saying you shouldn't be spending money there you shouldn't be having fun because you have this and you have that that's not necessarily what it's for and if you find a video that is nitpicking and saying things like that then you might need to find somebody else to you know inspire you to budget now i know dave rants can be a little harsh but i have thick skin I take what I need and ignore the rest. And so if you're not that person and you take everything to heart, then you need to find somebody who's a little bit more relaxed and not as <laughs> harsh when it comes to telling you about your budget and what you need to do. Um, and so I think that's really the first step, just getting a positive 
mindset around money and budgeting. All right, you guys, so my next tip is to have a current idea of where you are financially. A lot of people don't know where they are financially. A lot of people are like, oh yeah, I make this much money a month, you know, and I'm doing good or whatever. Um, but sometimes, you know, I'd be struggling. I don't understand because I make really good money. The reason why you don't understand why you don't have any money if you make really good money is because you don't know what your current financial situation is. You don't know what your income is versus your expenses. If your income is good and your expenses exceed your income, you will not have any money. You will be broke and you won't understand why. And the reason why you don't understand is because you don't know where you're spending your money. You have no idea you're swipe, swipe, swiping, online shopping, eating out, doing this, doing that, whatever the case may be, and you're not paying attention to your numbers. And the only way you can pay attention to those numbers is if you write them down, if you track them somewhere. And that's where a lot of people don't want to do. They don't want to track their money because they don't want to take the accountability for spending that money in whatever way they spend it and coming to realization that I am out of control with my finances. I am not as responsible as I thought I was. And to tell you the truth, this is one of the things that I did. I ignored my finances so long because I knew that when I sat down and I looked at my numbers, I'm like, Yoshi, you know, you said you was good with money, but boo boo, you're not really good with money. Really not. Like I was, I thought I was the bomb.com when it came to my money. I was like, I'd be saving. I always got to do. No, that was not the case when I finally sat down and I looked at my numbers. My numbers were astronomical when I sat down and looked at how much debt I had versus income and how much expenses I had versus income. And then I was wondering why I was struggling. Yeah. It's a bubble buster, okay? When you write your numbers down, you write your income and take out every single expense that you ever spent from that income and it starts to dwindle down to nothing and then to the negative, that's some good humble pie for your ass, okay? So make sure you know your current situation. Stop ignoring that feeling that you have that says, yeah, I might not be as good with my finance as I am. Because most of the time, you know you're not good with your finance. You're just keeping it in the back of your mind. As long as you don't pay attention to it and ignore it, you can trick yourself into thinking you're very good with money and you just need to make more money. Making more money doesn't solve all problems if you can't manage the money that you make now. Making more money just makes it a messier situation. It makes it even worse and digs you deeper into the hole. So don't think that, you know, having more money is going to get you where you is. It's just going to get you in debt faster, make you spend more money, make you be even more irresponsible than you already is because having more money is not going to make you responsible. If you can't be responsible with the little bit of money that you have now, you're not going to be responsible when you get more money. It just doesn't work that way. So moving on to the next step is to set some realistic financial goals. And the reason why I put realistic in there is because a lot of people set goals in life and they're not, I wouldn't say realistic, but they're not attainable in the time frame that some people have set. So for instance, you know, you could say, oh, I want to save $100,000 by the end of the year. But baby, if you only make $20,000 a year, how are you going to get 100000 I mean, I'm not saying it's impossible, but is it really realistic? And so goals are not meant to be astronomical or unreachable. When you set a goal, it needs to be smart and attainable. You know, like something that you can actually do and achieve and will bring you some kind of gratification when you hit that goal and motivate you to continue to set more goals in the future. If you're always setting goals that are unattainable and you never meet it and you never mix, mix the mark, you never get anywhere where you want to go, it's going to kind of deter you from setting goals in the future. And that is not the purpose of setting a goal. So to set a goal is to actually really teach you habits, habits of saying what you're going to do and actually doing it. In order to do that, you have to set realistic small goals first and lead up to a big goal. So for instance, if you want to save a thousand dollars a year, you take that thousand dollars, you divide it by 12 and then you divide it by how many times you get paid a month. And then that is what you save every single time you get paid. And if that number is too big, say it's supposed to be $50 uh, every time you get paid and you only make $250, then that's pretty much way more than you need to be trying to save and you might need to bring that down and say, oh, I want to save $1,000 in two years. So now that means I don't have to save $10 a month, whatever the math is, you know, I ain't doing no math, okay? And so that is what I mean by setting goals that are realistic, okay? And when you do that, it becomes 
Number one, gratifying. Number two is a positive look at money and kind of overshadows the negativity that you may still have by money. And number three, now you have the money that you want it and you can see it sitting wherever it is that you um, set that goal for. You could have set it in your savings. You could have set it pay down debt. You could have saved it to save for a new car. Whatever it is, you are now like, I can do this. I feel empowered because I set this goal and I actually reached it and it wasn't as hard as I thought it was. And see how that kind of shifts your mindset to a more positivity by having realistic, smart expectations when it comes to your goals and reaching them will make you continue to want to do that. When you have a negative um, reaction or a negative outcome, let's say that a negative outcome to goals, you're going to be negative about setting goals. But when you have a positive outcome to goals, you're going to be positive about goals. But in order to have a positive outcome, you have to have realistic goals, realistic attainable goals with a time frame, okay? And with real numbers. So for instance, if you go to Starbucks every week and you spend a $70 at Starbucks, a week, you know, you might say, okay, $70 a lot, yo. So let me reduce that by $20. Let's just go on and do $50 a week at Starbucks. And then you will be more conscious. You'll be more strategic about when you go to Starbucks. You'll go when there's a sale. You'll go when they're giving you extra points, whatever the case may be, so that you feel like you haven't met it but by reducing it by twenty dollars it really didn't affect your life in so much of a negative way that you just decide no i can't do this if that makes sense so make sure you're setting smart <laughs> attainable and realistic goals when you're setting goals for your budget all right you guys so now you know where you are with your finances you've come up with a plan what is the next thing you can do the best thing that ever happened to me was automating my expenses. A lot of people I talk to is so funny when I tell them that I just auto draft, auto draft for whatever date, whatever the amount is, whatever the statement, whatever, blah, 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 automate, automate, automate. A lot of people just don't like to automate their finances. And I really don't understand that concept. And maybe it's just me. Um, a lot of people are like, well, I don't want people in my pocket and I don't want them to take the money out when I want them to take it and this, that, and the other. Okay, that's fine, but for me, automating my finances and my expenses has saved me so much anxiety. I am not one to remember what the due date of a bill is. I'm always paying late fees because I'm not paying attention. I'm not doing this. I automate everything that I can automate. The only thing I don't automate, you guys, is my water bill. And let me tell you why automation works for me. Because my water bill be like $20 a month, right? $20 a month, but they don't take online payments and you have to go down there and pay, right? Why well, I get a bill in the in the mail the other day for $80 for my water bill, but it says it was a disconnect notice. You know why? Because I haven't paid my water bill in three months. You know why? Because it ain't automated, okay? I'm used to my bills being automated. I don't want to drive to the place. I don't want to go online and log on. I don't want to do anything. I want them to just get their money when they get their money. And a lot of people are like, well, if you automate it, it's unexpected. You don't know what it is. Now, I said I automate my money, but I ain't say I ain't pay attention. There's two different I didn't say automate and forget it. I said automate it. When I do my budget every single month, I log into those accounts and I look to see how much my next statement is going to be. I get emails. I set up like notification, notification of when you're going to auto draft and how much you're going to auto draft. Um, what day is it coming out of my budget? All that kind of thing. For me, it's a little bit easier because I am a month ahead. So this is the month of July. I already have my bills for the month of August already ready to go. July was paid for in June. And then September is going to be paid for in August. So all of my money is sitting in my bank account for my bills to be automatically draft for the next month. So I never really truly have to worry about if the money is there because I know I'm a month ahead. I'm just making sure the amount of money that I expect them to take out is the amount of money that they're going to take out. Because, you know, every single year, every couple of months or whatever the case may be, Somebody's going to increase your fees. Somebody's going to increase your um, light, your water, your gas. It's just variable depending on how much of those resources you use. Um, other places are just like my house note. I know it's not going to change in value or how much I pay a month on a yearly basis. So for the whole year, I know I'm going to be paying this amount of money. But next year when I get my escrow and my statements, it could change by a couple of dollars. It could go up, it could go down. It, it's not going to be an astronomical amount, but I will have to just adjust my budget for that. So automation is not set it and forget it like the crock pot. It's like set it, 
pay a little attention, adjust as needed, and keep it moving. Automation is your friend. I'm telling you, it will save you so much anxiety and so much stress. And when I say automation, I'm not just talking about your expenses. Automate your savings. If you move your money into your savings account before you start spending money, you have no reason not to save. None whatsoever, because it's already gone before you even knew it was there. The day your paycheck hits is the day that money need to be coming out that same day. You don't even know. It's already gone. It's already drafted. It ain't even there. And then that way you're you're saving automatically and when you spend money you don't feel as guilty because you've already automated your savings you know all your expenses are already coming out whatever the case may be i know one lady she doesn't want to automate hers so what she decided to do was she wasn't going to automate she was just going to go in there every single month and on the first of every single month she went and paid all of her bills whether they were due or not so she would have a credit for that amount and when it was due it was the credit was already sitting there and then boom she don't have to worry about it so that way she can control her automation they're not controlling for her they're not taking it out on the sixth and then the seventh and then the eighth and then the ninth because you know every due date is different everything comes out on the first boom bam done thank you ma'am don't have to worry about it again to the first of the next month you can do that automation doesn't have to come from the company you can automate your own stuff but automation is something that it's truly a game changer when it comes to your finances. So think about it. All right, you guys. So the next thing I want to talk about is just for people who are in debt. And we know in this society, damn near everybody and their mama in debt. Everybody owes somebody some, some, some. Okay. Student loans is the number one debt and mortgage of all the times. And the car note is next. So somebody owes somebody some money somewhere. But when we want to talk about debt, we want to talk about how debt affects your income and how it affects your personal finances if you're in so much debt that it is eating up all of your income you need to figure out a way to reduce that debt and i know it can be easier said than done but sometimes you just have to be a little strategic and think outside the box and when it comes to debt you can do one of several things depending on what kind of debt it is you can negotiate i know when i first started my financial journey i had like collections and all these other kind of things and so when i wanted to get out of debt and when i wanted to improve my credit score and reduce my debt to income ratio i started calling those collection agents i was like hey i owe you this much money can we negotiate on how much money I can pay you in order to say that this debt is satisfied and start to build positive credit and things like that. Like I even negotiated with one company. I was like, hey, I will pay you all your money. Like don't even reduce it. I just need you to remove it from my credit report. Move it from my credit report and I will send you all your money today. And you will be surprised how many people will be like, yeah, but sign us up. Give us the money. It will be removed today or in whatever the time frame is. But caveat get that in writing don't just get whatever whatever you need to get in the email in a writing they need to mail you some whatever the case may be so that if they don't take it off you can go to court and get it taken off so you know make sure you understand the consequences of what you're doing make sure you're thinking smart when you're negotiating your debt another thing is uh how to reduce your debt is doing like a debt snowball or a debt avalanche. These are kind of like techniques that you can use to pay off your debt faster. Um, the avalanche method is you pay, start paying off debt that has the highest interest first. It doesn't give you as much instant gratification, but it does remove, reduce the amount of debt that you end up paying overall. Or you can do the debt snowball where you pay your smallest debt first and work up to your biggest debt. This is what I did because I like instant gratification. It felt really really good to pay my smallest debt and just pay pay and then have a bunch of them knocked off and then know that once I get to those bigger debt it will take me longer but by then I am on the high from paying off those little debts that you know it taking longer didn't really affect me or make me feel any type of way that it was taking me so long to pay the debt so whatever you choose and then there's other methods those are the only two that I know of at the moment but there's a plethora of ways to pay off debt fast there's all kinds of methodologies and strategies and things like that but paying off your debt and reducing your um, debt to income ratio and how much expenses you have going out versus coming in can really really help your personal finance final step that i want to discuss with you guys is very important and i think is to have a support system 
or accountability partners when it comes to your personal finances. For me, this is not something that I actually had. I actually had to create it for myself. And how I created it for myself was by making videos on the internet to hold me accountable or you know reaching out to people whose videos I watch or watch them every week and they say hey did you budget this week did you do this so I kind of did a non-traditional way of having accountability partners but the best way is to have family members friends people who can be your role model when it comes to your personal finances I know everybody doesn't have this support system and they don't have those type of family members or friends sometimes so sometimes you're gonna have to think outside the box get a little creative of how to get a support support system if you know it's very popular on YouTube and the internet now to make budgeting videos and it was popular back when I started in 2016 and that's how I got started watching other people um, celebrating their wins with them making comments and although they didn't know me personally although we never met their videos inspired me to do better and then I started to inspire myself and then I started to inspire others and then I started to inspire my children and then I started teaching my ways to other. I used to have some budgeting clients. I don't really much do that too much anymore but I like being an accountability partner for others and letting others know that you know sometimes you're going to have wins, sometimes you're going to have fails, sometimes I got to give the hard truth that you're spending too much money here, you need to remove, reduce your money there and I got that same information in return and so having accountability or a crew or support system or whatever you want to call it when it comes to budgeting is very very essential because everybody wants to feel like they're doing a good job everybody wants somebody to pat them on the back or say congratulations or good job you're doing well you know one day at a time don't worry everything will work itself out and not to say that you should be looking for that from other people but sometimes it feels good to know that other people can see that you're progressing and working towards the goals that you set for yourself and it's always good to have somebody discuss you know your wins with your downfalls with and get information get suggestion they may know something about this that you didn't know about you may know information about stuff that they didn't know about and sharing that information makes you both both more likely to be better with your personal finance hey you guys so i hope you enjoyed today's video like i said i just want to give you some steps and some tips of what i did in order to get my personal finances together and i'm hoping that the things i mentioned today will get your thinking about how your personal finances are and how you can make them better. It's just another way for you to get your finances under control. And if you're watching this video, then you are on the first step. You're on the first step of getting your finances in order because now you are looking at videos, you're watching other people, you're kind of getting interested, you're kind of getting your numbers together, getting your thought process together, changing your mindset. And that is the first step in getting your finances together is doing the research so i'm so proud of you guys for watching this video if you enjoyed it please make sure you give a thumbs up make sure you guys subscribe make sure you turn on the notification bell so you don't miss any more videos from me and i will see you guys in the next video bye